Hey guys, how's it going? Zach here. And today we're going to be tackling one of the more interesting topics in maths, differentiation. And today, using that, this lesson will cover first principles and power rule, both to give us the der derivative of the function we're looking for. So, let's use the more interesting of the two first, first principles. I know we all love rather doing that than by power rule. So, let's start off with what we know. We know the function to find the derivative is given by the formula you see on the board now. So, what are we looking for here? The derivative, the underlying value, as you can see here, is the derivative. It's the gradient at any point along a function. So graphically, what is that? If we look at the function now as we see it, that means that we're looking for the point at the yellow dot, just here, for the gradient at that point, right? Let's do an example, a nice easy one to start us off, just so we get nice confidence building up to the end, end product. So, they've given us in this example, f of x equals 10x. Also, again, for those that want to rush ahead, go ahead. Compare yourself to me at the end of this little demonstration. So, let's say what we know. We know the function, and we know that we just need to input it with f of x plus h and minus f of x. The big catch here is that that h at the bottom has to be removed before we can apply the limit as h tends to zero. Because remember, a denominator with a zero at the bottom cannot be used. That's an undefined function. So, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is just move off to the left hand side of your board or your page or wherever you're working and then use just write out the easy stuff first, the f of x plus h as you see on the top. So the 10x plus 10h is written just here. Let's move that back into the main function just to see what it looks like, right? So the 10x plus 10h minus 10x is what we get from the top if we implement everything correctly, right? And from that you can see the minus 10x will cancel with the positive 10x, leaving us, as you can see, with 10a, 10h over h. And again, we cancel the h's, leaving us with that, fixing that initial problem we had, that we couldn't apply the limit without having that h at the bottom still in place. And that leaves us with the final derivative equals 10. See, did you guys all follow me? That was a simpler example, but let's just see how we apply it to a more difficult example in the next page. So, we're given f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is the sort of question you'll be getting in your exam. So take careful note of what we're doing here and try and work along with me if you can. So, the first thing again, all that we ever know about first principles is that we know the function. So, again, move to the left-hand side of your page and write out f of x plus h, because this is the real catching point, that substituting in the h is going to really catch a few of you out if you're not really, really careful. So as you can see, it's a bit of a big function there, and that's a really challenging thing to make sure you make no mistakes on. So really focus for that aspect, really. Okay, so this is the longer section that we had here. This is what we're gonna need to substitute right back into the main function. So once, let's see what that looks like once we move it back to the main function. Okay, it's a bit meaty here, so you're gonna have to really slow down for yourself here to give yourself, your mind specifically, the time to make sure it makes no careless errors. So the three things you have to make sure you've done is made sure that this function that you've written on the left-hand side of your page has made its way back into this main part of the function here without any errors. The next thing you really need to be careful of is taking that minus into this bracket here. So let's quickly do that and see what we get. See how the minus has been taken incorrectly? Now we can quickly simplify to see what we're left with. Let's go from this top. The x squareds will cancel, the 2x will cancel, and the plus ones and the minus one will cancel. So what does that leave us with? Well, it's actually a lot smaller than we started with, don't you think? I mean, look at how much damn work we've just had to do. But remember how easily we could have made a mistake on this. That's why we took so, so much care with what we were doing. So again here, we want to remove that H at the bottom. That H is our biggest, biggest problem with this whole thing. But again, we can just cancel here very easily. Careful with that middle bracket there. That H squared can be so easily forgotten as a one. Instead, it is an h that has to be remembered because it could easily be part of the whole or the overall function at the end of the day. So, let's move on just to over to the left-hand side again because we're running out of space on the board here. But that leaves us with 2x plus h plus 2 and we still have to apply the limit as h tends to 0. That gives us the final little bit of work that we have to do with that minus there from the h. right? And then we can rewrite it and bang, Bob's your uncle. We finally found the last bit of the equation and there's 6 or 7 marks in the exam guaranteed. So it wasn't so difficult, but it was a lot of work. The steps going from one all the way through to 10 at the bottom here will take you quite a bit of time, but if you're careful, you can get every one of these marks guaranteed. Okay, let's move on to the next section of differentiation, the power rule. And the power rule uses a very basic function. 
instead of finding the derivative using the first principles method, we use simply that given the fact that you know what f of x is, we can find what the derivative of it is using the following two rules. Multiply the coefficient of x with the exponent of x. So let's just write that out with colors for ourselves. As you can see, the coefficient of x is in blue there, a. Then the exponent of x is n in yellow. And then the final step to this whole process is just to find minus 1 from the exponent of x. So again, using colors, the yellow is the n, the exponent of x. Minus 1 is in blue. And that gives us our final example to use for today. So let's quickly walk through a basic example again. Stick with me now because the more difficult examples will require the easy steps that we get right here to be applied over and over and over again. So let's quickly run through it. The derivative of x will simply give us 5 times 2, remember that 2 comes from up top there, and then we have x, the exponent of x, minus 1. Rewriting that quickly for ourselves, that produces 10x, and voila, we found it. Look at how much quicker that was compared to those first two examples we did. So let's take a bit more of a complex example and show you how much faster you really are. So this time we've been given a cubic function, the x to the 3. So let's quickly work through it as we did before. The derivative of x is equal to, again, the coefficient, which is 1 for the x cubed, as you can see there, times 3, the exponent of x. And let's quickly walk through this. 3 minus 1 plus the coefficient of x times the exponent of x. This is the exponent, remember that, times x, 2 minus 1. I'm going to start a new line just to make sure it fits. 4, the coefficient of x, times 1, because that's a 1 there, times x. And this will be 1 minus 1. And then the last part, the all constants go to 0, because this has an x to the 0, which so it'll be 1 times 0. So this whole thing will go to 0. Let's quickly rewrite that to finish this all up. So the final derivative of x here will be 3x squared plus 8x plus 4, because this here gives you x to the 0, which is equal to 1. So there is our final solution to this. So let's do a quick review of what we are looking at here. The first principles works purely and only with this function you see here. Once you remember those, and let's quickly review what we need to look out for. We need to make sure that the h value is substituting correctly. Remember on the left hand side of your page, just up on top here. Then you make sure that you bring in that minus for this f of x correctly. And then lastly, you make sure you get rid of that h at the bottom so that you can bring in your limit as h tends to zero. Okay, so that's first principles covered. Simple, isn't it? So then the last part is differentiating with the power rule. And we only remember a and n, because that we can apply here as a times n. And then on top, you just deduct one from n. And that's power rule done for you. Guys, good luck for that exam. And let's nail differentiation the first time we get it.